Welcome to the show, everybody. Our guest this week is straight off the plane and right into our studios. He is not your average rugby player. Oh, no, this former Springbok Bulls player and now Buster Wari is one of the most recognizable names and respected in the game and, of course, in the hearts of many rugby fans and ladies alike. He has built his name on pure power and grit all while building his business empire and his social media following. Well, we are super excited to have you with us right here on In Touch. If you're tuning in live on Facebook, please use the comment section down below or you can tweet us at Supersport TV with the hashtag SSRugby. And hey, don't forget you can catch all our previous episodes on our YouTube channel, Supersport TV, or you can catch recent chats on Catch Up. But right now, let's see if you guessed our guest correct. Let's roll it. <laughs> Okay, Francois, rapid five questions. Your favorite song to sing in the shower? Uh, Drake. Uh, South African rugby player you take on a date? Jesse Quill. Ah, uh, go to drink in the morning? Uh, fresh juice. Uh, okay, fragrance that's called uh, Francois Hocart. Would smell like? Um, Tom Ford. Woo, what's the one job you wish you had? Uh, Formula One driver. Stop it. One talent uh, you wish you had? Um... Sing well. Who would play you in your movie about your life? Um, Jason Statham. One tattoo you absolutely hate on your body? Not one. One that you absolutely adore, your favorite one? Um, my goddaughter's name. Oh, uh, motto in life? Um, it, uh, Come on. It's actually a quote. Every, a person's life is a fairy tale written by God's hands on your character and embrace your life experiences. Oh, 10 points. <laughs> your mother always told you? To be a good boy. Yeah, what's the weirdest thing you've ever done for money? I don't know, play rugby, I don't know. <laughs> You're boring. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's awesome. Well, listen, ladies are in a tiz. All the guys are super excited to have you in studio. Good First to be of all, here. welcome to In Touch, but most importantly, welcome home. Thank you so much. Good to be back. Yeah, so listen, you earn extra points today because you went straight from a long haul flight to our studio. Yeah. Is that for pain much? No, I feel great. You feel good? I feel great. Great well, to be here. Well, we love you for being here. Listen, Thank it's you. obviously your off season. So you're here in SA, your family and friends, but what else do you have on the cards while you're home? Uh, I was actually going to go to Monaco um, with Vainant. Obviously, Vainant's retiring with his soul, planned this whole uh, retirement um, kind of getaway thing with the princess and, and her brother and stuff, because he's obviously mates with him. Mm -hmm. But I didn't manage to get out there. And uh, yeah, I obviously have to see family and, and obviously come to SA to attend to the business and make sure the empire is growing, you know? I want to chat about the empire in just a bit. But first, let's talk about your life in the UK. You've been there for a couple of years now. Um, how did you feel integrating into, you know, into their society, mm. the lifestyle, the horrible weather, and of course the Brits? Uh, for me, it was, actually, it, it was actually pretty fine. The weather, you know, if you sign a three-year deal or something, you can't go sit and moan about the weather every day. You get, kind of get yeah. used to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is funny is when it's 12 degrees, it's actually a pretty okay day. Okay. You get used to that kind of weather, but um, it was actually pretty easy. You know, it was easy because there's a lot of South Africans who obviously played abroad. You've met a couple of players and, and you make good friends with people there. So it was, it was actually pretty easy to get to the club and there's a lot of South Africans. So it feels yeah. almost like home, you know? Okay, so we keep up to date with your life on social media. I mean, Fine. you're definitely not the average rugby player. We love that you love the camera. I mean, <laughs> you swag hard on the Insta streets. We even tried to replicate some of those posts no, on the show. Well. No, 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 no. Don't say that. It was exhausting. <laughs> so kudos on the way you do it. Do you have a strategy? And do you feel like perhaps it might enhance your career? Has it helped you in any way? I definitely think it's, it's very important to build a brand outside of rugby because yeah. it's definitely important to... Well, whatever it is, base business off it, you, you know, marketing, you can, you know, work your business in, you know, within your profile. And um, I think, you know, a lot of people don't use that and, and say it's this and that and uh, why are you doing it? But um, if you use it clever, it, it works in your advantage, you know? Absolutely. So it's a whole that's new world. That's the aim of the guy. Aim of the, the game. Yeah, absolutely. And make some money while you're at it. That's the, that's the main thing. 
Let's bring it back home just a little bit. Now that you've been living in the UK a little bit, uh, are there any things from South Africa that now you miss, you maybe took for granted when you lived here? Um, definitely one of the things, obviously, is food. South Africa's got amazing food. We're lucky. Um, a general thing like the weather, but I'm not going to moan about that. I think it's just being familiar with your surroundings and yeah. thing like, it's a simple thing, but if I wanted to go to the doctor or some, just basically something simple, you know exactly where it is. You have people around you that helps you with certain things like that. Mm -hmm. When you go to a strange or a, a country abroad or a place abroad, it's, it's quite difficult because mm -hmm. you need to get to know all these things. You kind of have to start over. Yeah. But um, in saying that, you have to make the best out of out of any situation and yeah I've loved living that side and it's obviously great to be back. As, do you consider that home? Do you consider this home? Where um, are you right now? It that? depends. I, I don't I don't know if I'm gonna come back and live here. I'll always come back and see my family and friends but oh, wow. I'm looking to but this is more on the business side. Okay. Yeah to move to America after I'm done yeah because oh, I've got yeah. business there too yeah. Okay so yeah. your days in SA are limited. 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 But I'll always be back. Always. Be back. You're gonna miss your friends too right? For sure. I mean sure. you have you're Mr. P personality, Mr. Nah. Congeniality. You, listen, your clique is made up of some really big names. Let's be honest you just posted a photo of you and Wahid Panel and obviously your best friends with Kevin Lorena, Jesse Creel. Yeah. I mean how have your mates? I guess they're all like-minded people. Um, it's important to associate your, associate yourself with like-minded people and people that's got the same mindset, you know. And it's, yeah. I mean, you know Kevin, you know JC, yeah. um, Wayne. They're all, all great people and positive, always a positive attitude. And um, yeah, we just always just hang out and chill and bounce ideas off each other and yeah, just have fun. Have they played a part in your your road to success? Yeah, for sure. I mean, JC and JC is obviously. Um, I would say I, I kind of you know kind of guided him you know when he came to the Bulls he was still a youngster when he just got to the Bulls and I had my R8 I always used to go pick him up he used to live in when the, you had uh, your R8 I love the way you're just blocking. no yes. I mean <laughs> I, I've got a massive thing for cars obviously and yeah um, yeah he, he used to go mad about it and uh, and um, you know to see where he's grown and I, I actually saw him in London this weekend is it's amazing, you know, I'm proud of him as, as a guy and as, as a player. He's, he's done exceptionally well. And, yeah. Um, yeah, Kevin, you know, Kevin's also doing unbelievably well. He's fighting this weekend. Mm -hmm. Are and you going to support? It's, it's amazing to see how your friends grow. Yeah. Um, if they win, it feels like, you know, I win. So that's great. It's beautiful. Well, now that you said some beautiful words about them, we have one who's got some beautiful words about you. Do you want to speak? Yes. Let's roll it. Hey, my boy. Um, welcome back to South Africa. Um, so good to have you on the show in touch. Um, I don't think I'm going to speak about the amazing rugby player you are. I think everyone knows that and it's quite obvious. But uh, I think I just want to speak about more the great friend that you are and the inspiration you are to myself and to so many other people and kids in South Africa and around the world. Um, keep that up. Um, never change. Um, you're one of the hardest working people I know and uh, one of the people with the strongest mindset. And um, yeah, it's really been contagious over the years. Um, you kind of took me under your wing as a youngster. I remember being 18 years old and um, I think you really set the bar and um, set a great example for me, um, especially with your work ethic and it's something that I'll always keep close to me and I'm really appreciative of it. Um, yeah, wishing you all the best and uh, hope you enjoy the show. Cheers. That's my guy. That is your guy. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a, he's a great friend, you know. He's, Friends are always make very honest. Like us. <laughs> Friends no. are very honest, and the yeah. fact that he said such great things about you—how does that make yeah. you feel? Uh, it's it's special, you know. It's I, I always say I've got a few friends, and um, it's not because I um, struggle to have friends. I choose it that way because the more people you have around around you, it's I think are more problems. And if I have Thank three you. friends that's close to me and people I can trust, that's more than enough. So. 100%. That's great. Well, you know, he does mention that, you know, you're extremely motivated, you're super hungry, your mindset is contagious, is what he said. And many people share you as their ultimate inspiration. So where, who inspired you? How, how did this all come about? Your hunger for success, where does it come from? I don't know. For me, it's a simple, I don't know, like, if I can explain, like, it, it, it must mean something if you wake up in the morning with a burning desire to be extremely successful whether that is money or be successful in business or it doesn't really matter for me it, it must mean something and I think with everything I do I 
you know, try and push the limits, whether it's diet or training or in business. It all leads, you know, that you take into your personal life, you take it into business, you take it into sports. Um, I think how you treat people around you. Yeah. So for me, that's very important. I think I'm happy that I'm that strict on myself and, and um, and it's great that you rub off on, on your friends absolutely. and other people. So Yeah, absolutely. High standards. So um, I want to talk about your time quickly at, at the Warriors because when you before you joined, we all knew that they were kind of sort of at the bottom of the league. Then a lot of people, you know, started linking your presence to a bit of the success they started receiving. What did you bring to the table, do you think, uh, that really lifted their game? The thing is, I don't, I don't really know. I, when I got there, um, I, I don't think I could have had a better start to an overseas career than that. Yeah. Um, we started winning four, five, six games on the bounce, um, and I had my best se game of the season when it was our derby game, kind of the decider for relegation battle type of thing to mm -hmm. make us safe. And I think that happened for two or three years in a row, and that obviously gave you know, obviously push my market value up and but it's not about me. It's 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 a team sport and it's the people without the people around me I could have never done that. So um I just happened to be in the right place at the right time and sure. you know I played I I played some, some good rugby I would say and with the help of my teammates. <laughs> Absolutely, I love that. Okay, so fifty caps and counting, right? You just actually sorry. You uh, you got you received your fiftieth uh, cap just recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, 53 or is it fifty three now? So uh, your last game was a great one. Do you have um, a big rugby to do list for your time at the Warriors? You've signed up until twenty twenty one now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would like to. Uh, it's I'm so comfortable, and uh, you know they look after me there um, as a more senior player. I guess if you put the work in and and, and play well. There's three competitions running at the same time. So if, if you're a senior player and you obviously, you know, you push hard and you play well when you do, they don't overplay you. So they give you the rest in between. And I think it's when you get to the back end of your career, that obviously helps a bit, you know, with a bit of rest you get in between um, to make sure that you're fresh for the up and coming block or mm -hmm. four or five games. So, um, yeah, they look after me and I'm, I'm very happy there. So maybe one to retire at the club. But wow. we'll see how it goes. I'm still there for another two and a half, well, two and a half seasons. So, sure. so you'll we'll see. see. We'll see. One thing that we did see. Gotta keep them, keep them guessing, yeah? Ah, I see. I see <laughs> your strategy. Can we just quickly talk about your test debut for the Springboks, though? There's a very interesting story there. Tell us what happened. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, pretty bless him. I mean, he's, he's, everyone knows what a great rugby player is, but he's a great guy as well. And, mm -hmm. What it comes down to is he, I think he faked an injury to give me my first cap. <laughs> you serious? Yeah, I think it was only like five minutes. I only played for five minutes, but it's still a cap, you know. And, and I think thanks to him, um, I became a Springbok, which is obviously, you know, a dream come true. That's why we wow. play the game. And um, yeah, it was obviously a massive joke, you know, back then. And, and you wouldn't think that someone would do that. And, sure. and it's obviously not. But yeah, it's, it was obviously very special. Absolutely, so. fantastic. Are there any differences playing um, a UK-based team compared to a South African team? The teams are becoming, there's so many South Africans in the teams over there now. <laughs> it's, become, it's becoming like small South African. Um, like Gloucester, for instance, they signed a whole lot of, I think the Lions guys, Sale has signed a whole lot of South African guys. Yeah. Um, so when you see them, is it like, yo, dude, hi? Yeah, we. It's you know, it's, it's such a, I think it's rated as one of the best comps in, in you know in world rugby, right. uh, the Premiership, and it's it's great because you make friends all over. You know, we had a just which was a lot of fun a Sunday at the ship in London, which is um, this kind of open bar place, quite a big venue. Yeah. We had our end of season doing there, and it was us, Soul Sharks, and um, another team. Who was it? Anyway, it doesn't matter. It was okay. three, three teams and you would think that, you know, it's going to kick off because the guys, you know, in season they go with one another, you know, they, they get quite angry and not a lot of guys like each other. And we actually had so much fun, you know, we all got along and you, you know, that's where you make, you know, that's why rugby is such a great game. It's a gentleman sport, it's tough on the field, but you make so many friends. I like the fact that you said it's a gentleman sport, but there's definitely a flip that you switch on when you hit that field. Yeah. Oh, I think you've been quoted that the game is actually 80% mental, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That's that's why it's 
rugby is, is tough. Rugby is um, it's tough on your body. You know, we get messed up. I think the first game that we played, well, that we played against the Wasps, I bit through my tongue. What? Um, yeah, I popped my rib. Well, I had a, uh, a fracture and a grade two tear in my AC joint. So I just got injected every game to try and. But it, that's that's just that's. It's not normal, but it happens, and you have to just suck it up and, and roll go with again. the punches, literally. So it, it's a tough game. People don't always know what you go through. You know, it's, it's it's a lot of fun, and it looks you know it looks fun out there, and yeah. you make a lot of great mates. But it's people fun. say you got to have a couple yeah. couple screws loose, just a little, <laughs> to be able to be really good at the game. We actually sat down with a sports psychologist to get the 411 on what it really takes to be rugby unstoppable. Let's roll it. My name is Henning Gierke, I'm a clinical psychologist. My passion is as a sports psychologist, working with people, inspiring people, get the best out of people. I was actually so privileged working with this Primark rugby team as a sports psychologist for four years actually full time. We had a great journey actually winning the Tri-Nations, but we had tough times as well. So I learned such a lot about sport, about pressure. And that's what sports psychology is actually doing, help people in, in heavy, severe circumstances to be the best they can be, to relax, but to be focused as well. So winning the World Cup with the Springboks was, was actually very, was great for me and it was, a, it was a privilege for me to be part of that team. And, and that's the start of my journey actually being with different sport people, with the cricket team, with the swimmers. And so I had a, I had a great journey, but, but ups and downs, and that's what life is about. The main thing is being a sports psychologist is not about you. And I think it's not about the coach, it's this grand sports psychologist, you've got all the answers. What's important is if you can help people that they be the best inner coach actually. Self-awareness, you understand yourself better than anyone else. So if you go down and you, you a batsman, Quentin de Kock or a rugby player, whoever, he needs to know himself so well his own inner strength, how can he calm down? A guy like Osterrand, you needed to psych him up always. A guy like Skulk Berger, you know, he wants to have fun before a game. He's not serious at all. So the best way to help people is to help them understand themselves and just ask them questions and help them to get into that space again so they can go out and perform and be the best they can be. Because everyone is different. Everyone has been psyched up different. Nobody's the same. And that's a challenge we work with the team. How do you create that culture that you help a team that the best that they can be? What is their pattern? How can you help them to relax, to be calmer, but to go out with the will to win? And that's a challenge. Hmm, okay, well, there you have it. Um, do you relate to the it's a process thing when it comes to getting into the mindset? I mean, do you have any weird quirks that you do? Like, a lot of people are superstitious. Do you have a thing? Uh, no. <laughs> Are I you think, not trying I, to expose yourself? No, 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 no. I, I always, I would say, I always wear the same underpants. <laughs> okay, okay. They're nice though, but <laughs> <laughs> they're looking a bit old now. <laughs> uh, no, no, they, they're still good. They're still good. But um, I just um, getting into a good mindset, just some positive music, and um, yeah. That's about it. Not positive not music not. like death metal. Because no, I always no, no, wonder no, no, what no. rugby players listen to. Those, those Great. Sort of things, yeah. I see you. My Anything that puts you in a good mood, you know? Yeah, 100%. Some good hours for. Speaking of Drake, I mean, he's a very wealthy, very successful man. Can we just speak about um, a little article I read just recently? A lot of people actually read this article where you mentioned that you're planning on being a billionaire. Yes. Talk about ambition. What is the blueprint to being a mega wealthy person? I, I don't know. I, I just. Um... I just, I just think, just take the opportunities. I think we we get exposed to so many opportunities, functions you go to, you meet so many wealthy businessmen that, you know, if you use your opportunities to meet these people, they want to be associated with you. Um, there's always business opportunities to start a new product. Uh, if you work on your brand, um, you've got a fan base, you've got people looking up to you. Um, why not use that to go into, you know, launching a product or, or starting a, a brand or. You know, put your weight behind it and get the right people involved and, and, and go with it. And just, you know, always keep pushing. Things aren't going to happen by itself. Just keep on pushing, keep on working every day, like you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I speak to some business uh, people in South Africa, and they always mention you as one of the guys who are really, really smart. Not a lot of people in sport, when they're, you know, in their golden years, actually think about the future. And a lot of yeah. the times, guys aren't actually prepared. Yeah. Um, I think that's 95% of rugby players, especially they... 
they live a good life and they they have fun and, and I don't think sheltered, they, right? Yeah. You, sh you look, you oh, look yeah. after from the morning till the evening. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's it's easy to become. Look, when I was younger, it's easy to be to get stuck in that that mindset where you're untouchable or you you kind of think, oh, I can't play any bad like rugby or I can't underperform or anything and. Trust me, it will happen, and people like to see do you see well, but they also like to see you fall. Yes. Um, so you always have to think outside the box. You have to think about your, your career after rugby. Yeah. It's very important because we as rugby players have a shelf life, and that day that things stop, that income that you had or that money coming in, Stop's all of a sudden is gone. And yeah. if you don't have business that you worked on, I mean, we've got financial guarantee. So I've got rugby, a salary that gives me the backup to invest in a product or in a brand or in stocks or whatever it might How be. many businesses do you have going on right now, just out of interest? Uh, about four or five. I'm starting another one. Wow. But four it, it, it's, it's not to say that You're it's 31. all... 31. It's not to say that it's all going through the yeah. roof or it's, or it's... But that's why, you know, you, you're pushing, you're working. Every business that's you know, went into the billions and started somewhere. Started somewhere, right? I mean, is that why you've put your MBA on hold? Because it was a big thing, you know, the story yeah. broke that you... Yeah, I think obviously it's a great thing. I, I, I would say, um, I would like to say that I'm street smart and yeah. trying, you know, seeing opportunities and, and, and going after it. But I think with the MBA, it gives you that, that knowledge, that detail when you can, you know, hold your own when you sit in a room with corporate people or you can yeah. walk into any business and do anything. So. It's always a great thing to hear. It's mega tough. It's a lot of work. It's um, it takes a lot a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's obviously wasn't the right time. So you can always I can always go back to it. But um, it was a great experience starting it and stuff and to see where the, the kind of level you know. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, moving on to uh, the Cricket World Cup because obviously it's a big thing right now. We don't want to yeah. talk about what the pro tiers are doing because we are not interested. <laughs> but uh, I'd love to know from you. You've just left England. What's the vibe like right now? No, it's amazing. I, th I think also, once again, the weather has been quite, quite, uh, quite good. In, in because apparently it could have rained the whole. Yeah, the it was whole actually. Time. I mean, when the weather is good like that, especially in London, yeah. it puts everyone in a good mood. In a great mood, and there's just the buzz about the place, and obviously with the cricket. Yeah, it's it's always uh, it's always a great, great absolutely thing. fantastic. All right, well, 2019 is definitely the year of World Cups, and of course, with your World of Champions, you are in very good company. Let's take a look at what you are in store for for the next couple of months. Every time we walk out there, we know what we came came the whole country with us. Man, it is definitely a party the next couple of months when it comes to sport. How good you, you've obviously got a BMT, big match temperament, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I embrace pressure. All right. <laughs> so you're going to embrace this pressure because we're going to play a game called the five second rule. Have you heard about it? No. Okay. Well, see how well you fare. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some questions, mm -hmm. and we're going to put you on a timer. And you're going to have to, well, yeah, we, we've only got a timer of a minute, technical thing, but are <laughs> oh, we doing five seconds? Oh, no, my producer said we're doing five seconds. There oh, we go. All right. So go. you have three, sec you have three um, On answers to each question that you have to answer in five seconds. Did I explain that right? Yes, I did. Okay, great. We've got seven questions. Are you ready? We've got the timer and, but wait, you can't put the timer on yet because I've got to ask a question, right? Okay, and name three things you have on your nightstand. Um, CBD oil to help me sleep and yes. recover, uh, water bottle and my phone. You got it. Name three things <laughs> that you would say to a cute baby. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know. Come on, cute thing. Oh, sweet, no, no, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm an embarrassment. Oh my gosh, never mind. <laughs> three words to describe your Lamborghini. Uh, Five, four, three, two, 
two, one. You suck at this. <laughs> Name three reasons why you'd be late. Uh, getting ready. Mm -hmm. My, uh, Five, four, three, two, one. Come on, Francois, you suck at this. <laughs> Name three things that you take or steal from a hotel room. Um, and, and creams. Five. If it's the edition three, soap, two, I don't know. One, I think towel. you got that one. There we go. Name so towels. Yeah, not enough towels at home. Uh, not name, towels enough. <laughs> name three uh, ways to make a good impression. Three ways. Be a gentleman. Um. Oh my gosh. <laughs> name three other famous Francois. Uh, Francois de, uh, Francois de Blessis. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Faf de Clerc. <laughs> what happened to your BMT, man? No, but it's the questions are... <laughs> Come on, the questions are easy. Yeah. Do not diss my questions. Thank you very much. The questions maybe... are lovely. Okay, maybe let's do something better. How good are you at Super Brew? For the Super Rugby? I think I suck. Oh my goodness, you can't suck at everything. Francois, okay, I'm going to ask you your Super Brew predictions. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, we've got the Highlanders versus the Bulls okay, in New Zealand. What's your prediction? I'm gonna go bulls. Bulls by? I'm a bull. Yes, by. Um, by five points. Okay, lions versus hurricanes in the lions den. No, that's gonna be lions, mm -hmm. and I would say by twelve points. Okay, stormers versus sun, sun wolves Where? in Newlands, Cape Town. Oh gosh, break uh, my heart. No, I'm gonna say stormers obviously, and it's gonna be a big one. That's gonna be a uh, thirty-two points. They're to nothing. Them. Oh, 32 points by 32 points? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be lucky if the Sunwolves actually score something. <clears throat> Jaguars versus the Sharks in Argentina. That's going to be a very tight game. I think I'll go Sharks by three. Really? In Argentina? Okay. I'd love to see how the, these, yeah, I think these predictions they, they, go. The Jaguars are a good team. They're an amazing team. I haven't... Should I change that? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... You, I don't know. If you say by three, it's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm going to definitely take a look, though. This weekend, I'm going to text you and yeah, let you know. Yeah, please let me know. Mm -hmm. All right. Suck at that, that good. You suck at everything. Come she on, Francois. So <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Francois, thank you so much for hanging out. You thank are absolutely you. awesome. Thank you, you can so now much. go and deal with your, your flight fatigue. It's, that's the no, thing. No, I'm fresh. I'm fresh. You're fresh. All right. My yoga on the plane. <laughs> Good, uh, awesome stuff. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure that you check out First 15 at 7.30 tonight. And, of course, the big game happens on Super Sport 1 tomorrow morning at 9.30. The Bulls versus the Highlanders. You definitely don't want to miss it. Until next week, goodbye.